What is good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Foxy. Welcome back to the Fox's Den. Get into another reaction. You know we're continuing, continuing down this line of Jujutsu Kaisen. We just finished up episode two. We're getting into episode three, and we have another one after. So I'm very excited for this. Man, that last episode really, really fucking set the tone, bro. Like, bro, we're getting into the meats of this shit, of this mission, trying to protect this girl to assimilate with Tengen Sama, and we're right alongside Gojo and Geto all the way through since they're her bodyguards. I mean, this duo is fucking nasty, bro. That shit, that shit last episode was crazy. Basically, in the beginning of the episode, we get, you know, as I said, through the post-episode discussion of last reaction, they finished up Q, handled that pretty swiftly. We see a little bit more of Toji, or Dio, whatever you will. I've been calling him that because of his voice actor. I think I, I, I think his name is Toji, but I'm, I keep on saying Dio just in case I'm wrong. I think his name is Toji, though. I don't know. But, anyways see a little bit more of him and his little partner that they're trying to you know be able to take this girl out or capture her or whatever uh but they even put up a fake bounty for people to be able to wear you know gojo and get though down basically that's like their whole goal of this or at least toji's goal or whatever uh and just seeing a little bit more of him as a character and uh also a little hint that he might he might actually know megumi even though he denied that uh that could be out of spite and just also like a level of respect like, he's not he's not nowhere near my fucking level so yeah i don't know who the fuck you're talking about questionable but obviously he might actually have to know him since the guy even you know, the dude in the suit even mentioned it like how's he doing so that's interesting in itself and then we saw gojo and Geto actually in action uh, being her bodyguard by you know going to her school and you know saving her protecting her from these people that were trying to capture her because of the bounty on her head and so you know they handled that pretty swiftly and within that we um see that gojo is very much that fucking guy because he went to a very in-depth explanation on his curse technique and what he's capable of and so much so i could you can hardly understand what the fuck he's really talking about because you don't have that curse technique you know what i'm saying but essentially he said that it's very exhausting so you can tell how much work he's putting in and uh, what kind of person and the type of dedication that takes to live up to that and be able to use that curse technique effectively. I mean, yeah, Gojo's that fucking guy, bro. So that that was lit. And also seeing him actually take out that guy, the clone dude in, in, in the um, bag mask. And he did it pretty, pretty effortlessly, as we usually are used to seeing Gojo doing things. He does it pretty effortlessly, and he always comes out on top. Uh, and then Geto as well. Geto is not one to be fucked with either. Like, this duo is fucking insane. So they successfully uh, save her, and they're actually officially on their way to Jujutsu High now. So, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're trying their best to actually accomplish this mission and bring her to Tengen-sama. We also saw at the very end, we got a cliffhanger. Uh, the, you know, the maid lady has apparently, apparently been captured, so... Um, I don't know how the fuck that happened because she was with Ghetto unless they got separated in some, I don't know, because we, we jumped to Gojo for the last half of the episode. So yeah, I don't know how they, exactly that happened, but I'm assuming that's what we're, exactly we're going to jump back into and, you know, hopefully we, we uh, I guess maybe we have to have a little sidetrack mission before we get the Jujutsu High, so maybe this is completely dedicated to just saving her. Because uh, obviously I'm, I'm an eye, the, you know, the girl, the, the vessel or whatever, cares about her a lot. So that's I'm assuming what we're getting into. That's what I think we're going with. And uh, I'm excited. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. If you guys enjoy it, please leave a like down below. Comment, subscribe for new. Hit that notification bell so you know the next one's dro dropping. And show my girl Luna some love. Because she is chilling like a villain. Let's get into it. Episode 3, Jujutsu Kaisen, Season 2. Oh, so yeah, right, right back where we left off. Yeah. Oh. So he actually trusted her, and they split up. Okay, yeah. So this is how that happened. Hmm. <laughs> 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 
See, I get it. Yeah, she, she, I mean, she already she's already said goodbye to her school without even saying anything to her friends there. So this is like her one true like family member, like closest individual. Like she's got to like say goodbye. Mmm. <laughs> you ain't fucking around. Wait, what? Look, they're at the beach now. Oh, damn, they handled that swiftly. <laughs> Yo, this show's all over the place. I love this shit, dude. Oh, this vibey ass opening too, man. Dude, I love this open. This is my favorite opening so far. This is my favorite opening from what I'm watching so far. Bleach is vibey too. But compared to this, this shit vibey vibey. Mm. Love this shit. So good, bro. Definitely my favorite opening so far. Okay, so we at the beach. We chilling. Already saved her. Lickety split somehow. Honestly, are you really surprised though? Like I said, this duo is insane. Wild, bro. This is what I'm talking about, dude. Like, these two seem like they're unstoppable. Like, these two are insane. Hey, none of me. Face we haven't seen before, I don't think. Yeah, I don't recognize this guy. Reminds me of Itadori. すぐれ、戻るのは明日の朝にしよう。昨日から術式を解いてないな。ついに戻る。今晩も寝るつもりないだろう。本当に高専に戻らなくて大丈夫か。Damn, like, bro, there's just... Dude, dude, Gojo is such a crazy character. <laughs> yeah, they're giving they're giving her a nice day of a little bit of sightseeing, exploring, you know what I'm saying? Like, try and give her, like, the best, like, time. Just have fun. Because your, your life is basically about to be... No more, really. Like you're not dying, but you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to do what you want. Damn, that shit looked good. Yo, stop, bro. I haven't eaten yet, bro. Damn. Mm. <laughs> Dumping hot sauce. Yeah, that's me, bro. I've been like, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Yo, the piano. Jeez, bro. Going all out with the piano on this soundtrack, man. Damn. I have goosebumps, bro. Shit. That's fucking Vindlin level fucking piano right there, dude. Damn. Making me feel some type of way. Whew. Okay, so they made it. Juju's too high. Direction mission day three, three o'clock. See? He, he finally just let it off. He finally just turned off the technique. Oh! Excuse me? Yo! I think it's our guy. Yeah. Oh, shit, bro. Nah, yeah. See? Nope. 
went exactly how he went or how he planned it. Oh my fucking god, dude. And that's how the episode starts? Holy shit! Gojo clan with the six eyes on a lark. Oh, wow. Mm. See? Yep, this is why he was making... He, this is why he was making him use his technique for that long. He struck at, he struck at the perfect moment. Oh, my God! Oh, this dude is insane, bro. Damn, we're already about to see Gojo and this guy fight. Oh, dude, this is episode three. This is episode three. <laughs> he said, who do you think you're talking to? Yo, this nah, see, I, dude, just look at this guy. This guy is a problem. Okay, so the bounty was just completely fake. That was the bounty. Yeah, so they cut it off and everything. So there is no real bounty. They're just... They just want to take her out? Oh, wow. Is zero cursed energy? Heavenly Pact. Ooh! Yo! Yo! <laughs> Are you seeing this shit? <laughs> this is episode three. He said, "Back the fuck up." Yo, the soundtrack. Oh my! Oh my! Oh. <laughs> oh, not, nah, nah, it's too much for me. It's too much for me for episode three, dude. Like, what the fuck is going on, bro? Breathe, breathe, Christopher. Holy shit. Bro, this dude is fast as shit. Oh. Maximum output. Yo, the animation. He just got rid of all the surroundings. He's like, fuck it. Make sure you can't hide no more, bro. Nah, this this is wild as fuck, bro. Wow. Oh, he broke through infinity. Bro. Oh my. Yeah, all right. Uh, okay. How does he live through this? Oh my God, bro. I told you this guy is a problem. Inverted Spear of Heaven. Damn, okay, so that's how he was able to pierce through infinity? Because he basically, like, absorbed the fucking attacks that he was using the whole So it's only right that that amount of strength was able to force its way through that. It was basically infinity through versus infinity at that point. This man literally looks like he's dead. He literally looks like he's fucking dead. I mean, any normal person would be dead, for sure. So, like, how the fuck is this man in the present right now? Like, what, what dude... This is wild as fuck, like, I, dude. I'm stressed. I'm stressed already, and it's the third episode. I'm fucking stressed out of my mind. Doc. 
本部階段を降りたら門をくぐってあの大樹の根元まで行くんだそこは光線を囲う結界とは別の特別な結界の内側限られたものしか入ることはできないそれか引き返して黒井さんと一緒に家に帰ろう What? 担任からこの任務の話を聞かされたときあの人は同化を抹消と言ったあれはそれだけ罪の意識を持てということだ人会う前に悟るとの話し合いは済んでる Oh wow okay so they were already planning to respect her wishes I guess Yeah okay いいのかい天元様と戦うことになるかもしれないよ<笑>ビビってんの大丈夫なんとかなるって私たちは最強なんだリコちゃんがどんな選択をしようと君の未来は私たちが保証する OK Yeah, she wants to live her own life, naturally. Well, I'm glad they actually respected that. What the f are they actually gonna fight Tengen Sama now, though? I mean, this is like against his, the, his wishes, I guess, right? Nah, 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 nah. Nah. Bro. Nah. <laughs> this. <sh> <laughs> This fucking episode. This... Episode three. Bro, this fucking guy is a problem. What the fuck? Yep, see, and see, Geto's so used to Gojo being, you know, bro, nah. Brother, smart. Nah, it's too tall. Problem. Bro. Oh, yeah, get those, get those pissed. <laughs> and it fucking ends there, dude. It fucking ends there, dude. Like, what? Oh my god. Nah. Nah. I was not expecting that shit. That sh nah. They give us that happy ass, wholesome fucking moment. She's like, I wanna live, I wanna be with everybody. Like <laughs> I love my life. I wanna keep my life. And Ghetto's like, it's wholesome because Ghetto's smile. Like, of course you would. Like, yeah, like let's go home and then Nah. That nah. That's just fucking crazy, bro. That was that was insane. That was a roller coaster of an episode. Holy shit. Episode three. Episode three. Let's talk about it. Alrighty, guys. What a crazy ass episode of Jujutsu Kaisen. Jeez, man. This is episode three of the second season. That shit was fucking phenomenal, bro. That, that nah, that shit was crazy. That was an insane ass episode. Like, I'm a little starstruck right now. Like, I'm a little speechless. Like, that shit was, that shit was through the roof, bro. They fucking, they went in this episode, dude. Like, bro, if you forgot how crazy, insanely good Jujutsu Kaisen is, <laughs> this episode fucking reminded you what JJK is all about. I mean, damn. Right at the beginning of the episode, I'm pretty sure we get right back where we left off. Pretty much. You know, with, um... Kuroi, you know, uh, the maid girl, uh, the friend of Amanai that was kidnapped. They were like, you know, debating how they were going to handle this. Maybe use uh, a double or, you know, like some sort of person to play as Amanai to take to the location meeting and, you know, be able to save this girl or whatever. <clears throat> and at first, that's what Gojo was proposing. But then Amanai spoke up and was like, well, what if I don't get the chance to say goodbye? Like, I, I haven't even said goodbye to like her yet. You know what I'm saying? And that's probably like the most important 
person in her life or the closest person that she's had in her life because her parents have been dead for a long time and she she you knows she's not she's been she hasn't been sad or lonely about that for a long time now like she got over that a long time ago but in terms of like everybody else and like especially her and like these past few days leading up to this moment like she realized like she wanted to actually like stick around but yeah she wanted to be able to say goodbye to her so gojo and Geta were like all right fucking handle this and she's coming along and gojo pretty put it plain and simple like if you if you fuck up or if you can't keep up you're getting left behind basically and she was cool with that and so it literally does this quick ass transition to where all of a sudden they're at the beach and they're all having fun together and it's like what the fuck <laughs> so basically it just goes to show like how quickly they handled that like they went to the location and you just see gojo kick the door down and kick fucking both of those dudes faces in and they save her so yeah that was nothing to them and so they enjoyed their time at the beach and they were supposed to leave i think right after the beach they headed to jutsu high but after having fun and, and gojo showing his kindness and trying to give amanai some sort of comfortable happiness and, and you know just have fun until she's assimilated uh that was what the whole beach thing was for and then like once ghetto said like you know it's time to go like let's go and she got kind of pouty and she was like damn like you know what i'm saying and then gojo noticed that obviously so he's like you know what let's just let's just move it to tomorrow you know what i'm saying get those like you sure and then that's where gojo's like yeah yeah it's fine like you know it's whatever and and you know um and i get super excited like she's like oh my god yes thank you like you know you can just see how um exciting and how much her face lit up when she heard that you know what i'm saying like and so they're they're really keeping uh, her you know thoughts and emotions uh in you know respected you know what i'm saying uh even though she's like this is like their mission or whatever and like what they're supposed to do so that that really excited her and then you see like kind of like a montage of them enjoying the day like going kayaking and then visiting the aquarium and and, and that beautiful piano that was playing over that was amazing uh, and then right before that montage like sort of happened like you know gojo's conversation with ghetto ghetto was like you know notice like you've been using your technique this whole time and you didn't sleep last night so you're planning on not sleeping tonight like are you sure you're good like you're fine like this goes to show how much like dedication and how much it takes for him to be able to use his technique and and um use it effectively and and, and just how dedicated and, and useful he is like gojo's fucking insane bro so he was he was using his technique the whole time you know making sure nobody could get close and, and, and get a jump on them uh, until they got to Jujutsu High. And so, yeah, they stay another day and they enjoy themselves and then they finally get to Jujutsu High. We saw Nanami for a quick second with some other youngster, I think it was the first year it said. And I don't think this is a character that we already know. Uh, and I don't think we've ever seen him before. So I wonder if he's still around or if something happens to where he's just, you know, he either died or something. Because like this is a new face, obviously. This is... The, the uh, only time we've seen this person uh, in the past. So he's either dead or fucking, I don't know. So <clears throat> that was interesting, but seeing Nanami was all obviously really cool. Like we're seeing these characters on how they used to look. Like Gojo and Geto look obviously very much, pretty much the same uh, besides Gojo's blindfold, you know, hiding his eyes and shit, uh, which is pretty much what he primarily is, is his appearance in the present timeline. But yeah, we got to see Nanami again, so that was pretty cool. And them, like, kind of trying to regroup or, or at least group up with them. Like, they're, they're a part of, like, you know, giving them support in the mission. It was, like, kind of hanging back or whatever. So, yeah, they stay another day, and Gojo keeps up his infinity the whole time to make sure there's no loose ends and everything goes smooth. And so they actually get the Jujutsu High, and they finally get within the barrier. And, and for that one split second, Gojo's, like, he, you can see it in his eyes, like, the vibrance and like the brightness of his eyes goes down and you kind of hear this sound effect and it's like okay he finally let go of the infinity like he turned it off like he was able to rest for a second you know what i'm saying and he it, yeah that's rightfully so like you're, you're safe now right you're within the barrier that was that one moment of fucking letting his guard down where toji or dio whatever striked and he stroked fucking hard, bro. This guy, nah, I knew this guy was gonna be a problem, dude. He stroked at the perfect time, stabbed him right through the fucking chest, stomach, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, luckily Gojo, obviously he's very useful and, and talented in everything he does. So he basically made it where it wasn't like nothing like pulled out of like the wound. So like he was pretty much fine, but like still he's gonna have to do something about it eventually. But this is where he was, you know, he's like, you know what, I'm gonna take care of this guy, take Amanai and get the fuck. Like start heading to Tengen Sama or whatever. Wherever they need to take her. 
And so this is where we see this battle go down. <clears throat> and like I said, yeah, Toji is a fucking problem. This guy is insane. He actually ended up fucking throughout that whole battle. Showed what he was capable of. He has no cursed energy, apparently. And it seems from what Gojo was deducing, he has a heavenly pact with that curse that was around his neck. Or just in general, that is giving him his physical prowess and also like he kept the interchanging weapons through the curse that was around his neck like he at first it was a sword and then he pulled out a dagger and then like the last dagger that he used for example and just how fast he was with the heavenly pact like bro the animation was through the roof that shit looked insane like absolutely insane bro like that shit was crazy and we see gojo you know make, make you know keeping his distance not keeping his distance but making him st fucking stay back like you know what i'm saying uh using all of his techniques and, and, and his infinity in action and that battle was insane and then basically he realizes that he can't like really track him but he's like okay as long as i keep tracking the cursed uh spirit around his neck then i'll be able to tell where he's at because he can't only rely on instinct as well and he doesn't have his you know he's not able to track him like he usually can with his cursed awareness or his infinity because he doesn't have any cursed to, 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 um Toji or whatever his name is doesn't have cursed energy so he's like okay I gotta pay attention to the fucking curse around his neck and he was doing that then he was also moving so fucking fast he was like okay this guy keeps on hiding throughout all these fucking this, these buildings around me and shit so this is when he uses his his crazy ass curse technique whatever he used blue whatever fucking max output and just obliterated the surroundings around him and the tracking of all that and like nah that shit looked amazing that shit was fucking crazy and then that's when Toji or whatever fucking sends out these flies and it kind of surrounds Gojo and then that's where he can't sense them anymore. Like it's distracting his senses because he has to pay attention to the curses. Now there's a shit ton of curses around him so he can't pinpoint which one is which. Uh, this being the, the curse around his neck. And so he's trying to deduce like what the fuck do next. He's like, I should use blue again. And he's like, wait, no, he's distracting me because he, he, I can't track him. He's going for Amonai. So th this is where he gets him, where he turns his back again and it's almost like, he, dude, like this guy, nah, yeah, this dude's a fucking problem. It's almost like he read Gojo like a fucking book. The Gojo. Like that, that is a crazy feat, bro. And he, sure enough, got behind him and was actually able to break through infinity with that dagger that he used. Because apparently that dagger is able to like absorb whatever technique is thrown at it. So with infinity being thrown at it, that's naturally why he was able to actually break through it because infinity is insane like it's not something you can just easily break through so that makes sense i guess because it was absorbing it's like infinity's own sort of cursed energy power or whatever and that's what made that even possible in the first place breaks through that stabs him cuts him down his fuck like he has this huge slash through his chest stabs him multiple times with his leg i mean he looks like a fucking mess it's literally a murder scene on the high school property like gojo he looks dead he's got flies just sitting on his dude he looks he looks like he's literally was just murdered like bro i don't know how the fuck he gets out of that and how he's still alive today but that's why i'm excited to watch this next fucking episode because that shit was insane and that's basically where we get you know uh moving on to like what the last part of the episode was which is basically with ghetto and Kuroi and I'm and I saying goodbye to Kuroi and you know get to finally you're leading her to you know the the the, the room or the area that Tengen Sama is in and um and then he goes on to explain like okay you can go down there and you will be safe within that barrier because there's only certain people that are invited that are allowed in that barrier the inner layer of the barrier like at the base of like the tree or whatever or we can turn around and we can go home with Kuroi and she was like, what? And uh, as everybody else is, is like, what the, f what are you talking about? Like, this is the whole point of like bringing her here, right? Like we got to finish this fucking mission. What, what was that all for? You know what I'm saying? Um, but it just goes to show that Gojo and Geto were going ahead and like respecting what she would have felt and what she wanted to do from the get go. Like they already had talked about it. Like, what if she doesn't like, what if she fights it? Like, what if she doesn't want to assimilate and Gojo was the first one to say, like, that is fucking off. Like, fuck it. So it, see, it seems that, uh, obviously, Gojo, after only hanging out with her for a little bit, uh, realized, you know, she shouldn't have to do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, it sucks since she's special or whatever, but, like, she's her own person. Uh, so they wanted to respect that if they if she actually didn't want to, then, like, she, she should every, have every right to walk away and be able to live her own life. And that's exactly what they did. And 
Yato was like, all right, let's go home. And she starts, you know, lashing it, like, you know, not lashing out, but expressing herself and, and how she really wants to stay along with everybody else and live her own life. And, you know, it just goes to show that they were right. You know, she they, they kind of saw this coming. They're like, all right, we'll respect that. And all right, let's go home. And she says yes. And it's like this ha- uh, this happiness, this wholesome moment that the, the music is uplifting this wholesome moment. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden it just cut off by a fucking gunshot to her head. Like, bro, nah. Oh, man, this shit crazy, bro. This shit crazy, dude. Damn. Oh, my God. I was not expecting that. That shit, bro, that episode was stressful as fuck. So, obviously, once that happens, Ghetto is, like, kind of in shock at first because he's like, what the fuck are you even doing here? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's used to Gojo, like, being Gojo, and, like, you should have nothing to worry about. Like, how the fuck are you even here? There's no way he would let you come here. So that's why he was actually literally confused for a second. Like, there's no way. The only way you're here is if you actually defeated him. And it looks like that was the fucking case. So Ghetto is, bro, that's where the episode and that cliffhanger was crazy. He was like, Shine, die. And you saw you saw the conviction in his face, like, bro, nah. Shit, dude. It looks like we're about to get fucking Ghetto versus Toji this next episode. You know what I'm saying? And who I, how the fuck does Gojo like I, I don't I don't get it, bro. That episode was a masterpiece that shit was gas bro and it's only the third episode i keep saying this is the third episode bro damn damn but i think that covers about everything man that that shit was crazy bro that was that was a that was a 10 out of 10 11 out of 10 fucking episode bro like that shit was gas i think i was gonna do it for me for this one so we're gonna be jumping right into the next one so stay tuned for that i don't know uh, it should be uploaded right after i don't know exactly how i'm gonna upload all these reactions that i've done today in what order what schedule whatever but it's coming so that's what we're getting into next i hope you guys enjoyed this one if y'all did please like down below comment subscribe for new and hit that notification bell so the next one's dropping i'll see y'all on the next one y'all be good deuces